Think of it like a pyramid. Classic IT covers the traditional aspects of IT, such as routers, switches, firewalls, network connectivity, and so on, which are used to connect things like workstation, desktops, printers, servers, and more. In the middle tier, healthcare systems are more specialized software designed for specific tasks in hospitals. We're gonna to get to those in a minute. Finally, at the very top of the pyramid are the medical devices, like the modalities, the imaging devices, or portable workstations. Obviously, with all these different pieces fitting together, it's important to monitor the hardware systems and devices to make sure that you get alerted when there are problems in the infrastructure. It could be a medical system that crashes, or a server that becomes unreachable, or slow network traffic. Whatever it is, wherever it is in the infrastructure, you need to know about it. When it comes to monitoring the bottom tier of the pyramid, the classic IT, pretty standard methods apply. SNMP, WMI, flow protocols, and more can be used to keep track of your routers, switches, servers, and so on. When it comes to monitoring the middle and top tiers of the pyramid, the healthcare systems and the devices, you need more specialized approaches. But just before we get into these tiers, it's important to understand how everything fits together. If you already know what the architecture is like in a medical facility, feel free to skip ahead. But if you don't know, here is an anatomy yes, another medical pun, of a typical IT infrastructure in a hospital. The Health Information System, or HIS, and sometimes HIMS, is the system that handles all the administrative data in the hospital. This includes clinical, financial, and operational information needed by healthcare personnel on a daily basis. Essentially, the purpose of a HIS is to provide a patient's health information and treatment history at the place and time that it is needed in the hospital. A HIS often operates with several specialized subsystems, Let's take a look at a few of the common ones. As its name suggests, the Radiology Information System, or RIS, handles the radiology workflows. What this means is that it's responsible for electronic management of imaging departments. This includes scheduling imaging appointments, managing the patient lists, resource management, and the transmission of results of analysis of medical images. The Laboratory Information Systems, or LIS, support the process around the data exchange between the hospital and laboratories where tests are carried out on samples from patients. Then you have the PACS, or Picture Archiving and Communication System, which is a system for storing and accessing image data from modalities or the imaging devices. At the center of it all is the integration engine. This is a central and important piece of software because it connects everything else together. With all the medical systems we've just spoken about, you might have data in different formats, or you might not have direct connectivity between the systems. The integration engine connects these various systems by receiving, modifying, and distributing messages or data in multiple data formats. Speaking of data formats, healthcare systems have their own protocols and standards. DICOM, Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine, is used to transfer and store image data from radiology, CT scans, and ultrasound imaging in a central system, which is usually a PACS. HL7, or Health Level 7, is used for patient data distribution and ordering between the integration engine and the other systems. FHIR, or Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, is used to exchange electronic health records, such as global patient details, between hospitals, clinics, doctor's office, and so on. It is based on a RESTful API. So that's a typical architecture in a hospital. Here's a very simplified example of how it all fits together. And just stick with me a little while longer because we're about to get to the good monitoring part very soon. A patient checks into the hospital to get an MRI. Their details are entered in the HIS and then sent to the RIS using the HL7 protocol. The attending doctor places an order request in RIS to set up an appointment for a scan, also communicated using HL7. Once the scan has been done, the images are stored on the PACS. The protocol used for this is DICOM. And now, the doctor can retrieve images from the PECs using DICOM. Just from this very simple example, you can see how important it is that data flows between the systems smoothly. This means monitoring your infrastructure, so let's look at how to do that. But before we do, you might be asking yourself, why are we putting so much effort into making a video like this with so much information? Are we trying to sell you something? Well, who isn't? We produce monitoring software called PRTG. You can test it for 30 days, and there is even a version for larger enterprises and also a version hosted in the cloud. It's flexible enough to meet all your monitoring needs and gives you the tools you need to monitor healthcare IT as well. Right, now that my boss is happy that I've made a short advertisement, in this video, we can carry on with our topic. So let's get back to how you can keep your infrastructure running through monitoring. 
We've already briefly mentioned that the bottom layer of the pyramid can be monitored with classic monitoring approaches. But what about the middle and top tiers of the pyramid? Let's start with the middle layer. All the medical systems like HIS, RIS, and LIS and their interfaces with one another. Because of how all the systems are interconnected, there is an important key to monitoring these systems, the HL7 protocol. If you can leverage HL7, you have access to key points of the data flow between the interfaces of the medical infrastructure. The medical systems like LIS, RIS, and HIS are all connected using HL7. If HL7 messages are not being processed correctly by a specific system or HL7 messages are incomplete, then this can cause delays or issues in other systems. A good way to monitor this? Continuously send dummy HL7 messages to the different systems and then check that they have arrived successfully and with complete information. This can also be done using monitoring software that supports HL7. Another important aspect of the medical systems is the integration engine, as I mentioned before. This is the hub of the IT environment. It receives messages from different systems, modifies them into formats that can be understood by receiving systems and subsequently distributes the messages. It does this using multiple formats, including HL7, DICOM, Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, FHIR, and HTTP-based requests. The central nature of the integration engine means that if it is down, a lot of hospital workflows will be impacted. For this reason, monitoring it is essential. An unintended benefit of monitoring the integration engine is that you will also know the health of connected systems or devices. Most vendors provide a REST API that you can use to query the health and status of an integration engine. Using this approach, you can monitor aspects like free memory, free disk space, CPU usage, and so on. You can often also get information about the various channels, such as the number of messages sent and received, messages in queues, and so on. All of this is very useful, but it's good advice to also monitor the integration engine using monitoring software, and not just over the REST API. Why? Well, if the integration engine goes down, then the REST API is probably not going to be accessible either. You need an external system keeping tabs on it. You can monitor the same elements that you would using the REST API with monitoring software. The number of messages processed by each channel is a good metric. You can also check if there are errors contained in the messages. Furthermore, available memory of the integration engine server is very important. And if there's a connected database, it would be good to know what the read-write latency is to the database. So that takes care of the middle tier of the pyramid. Let's move to the top tier, the devices. Modalities are perhaps the most important medical devices. They're a key diagnostic tool and are a vital part of many different medical workflows. Many medical devices provide their own monitoring mechanism, but these are usually separate from anything else, and so it's a good idea to find another way of bringing them into your monitoring concept. Since medical imaging devices use the DICOM protocol, DICOM is a great way to monitor these devices. DICOM has various requests that return data, and you can use these to check on the modalities and other DICOM devices. Let's take a look at a few options and examples. See echo As it has been for many decades, a ping test is still the simplest and quickest way to see if a device is up and responding. While the traditional ping is not possible with many modalities, DICOM offers something very similar, the see echo request. Like ping, you can send a see echo request to a device and check that you get a response. You can, and certainly should, also check on how long it takes for the response to get back because high response times obviously might indicate problems with the modality. See find. Modalities have a work list attached to them. This work list is basically a list of jobs that the modality has to process. If five patients need an MRI scan, then the modality has five work list items. The number of work list items currently associated with a modality is a good indicator of that modality's health. For example, if the modality has a bottleneck or a malfunction, the number of items in the work list might grow disproportionately. If the number of work list items is too low, on the other hand, then it could be that requests are not being processed by the device. This count of the work list items is a key metric to watch. You can use DICOM's see find request to do a count of the work list items associated with a specific modality, or check the count across several or all of the modalities. If you've established a healthy range for the count to be in, you can spot potential problems if the count goes higher or lower than the expected values. You can also use the see find request in another way. 
The usual configuration for modalities is that they store the images they capture either to a PAX or to some kind of storage device. If there's a connectivity problem and this is not possible, for instance, there is a network outage, the modality might be storing the images locally. Thus, a good way to monitor for potential problems is to check if a modality has images stored locally. To do this, you can use the CFIND request to check the device for locally stored series or studies, where series of medical images are grouped by studies, so you can use either level to check for images. There is so much more that I can say about DICOM. If you'd like a video dedicated specifically to monitoring using DICOM, I'd love to know in the comments below. So that's the general overview of what's in a typical medical environment and how you can monitor the various aspects of it. Obviously, medical environments are complex, so there's a lot more to figure out. However, I'll tell you the most important part of monitoring your healthcare environment, getting all your monitoring data in one place. As you've seen, medical IT has various systems and protocols and also includes classical IT. You don't wanna to have to use multiple tools to monitor it all. Find yourself monitoring software that not only handles classic IT, but also includes support for HL7 and DICOM. For more information on how you can monitor your healthcare IT with PRTG, visit the links in the description below. If you have questions or wanna see more healthcare IT content, let us know in the comments and stay healthy out there.